Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Ariel Epstein here with Sports Grid. We're joined now by the senior analyst and writer for Number Fire, Jim Sanis. Jim, are we going to see a high-scoring game this Pro Bowl weekend? I really hope so because it's always more exciting when we get some points out there, and that hasn't really been the case recently. Last year's Pro Bowl was really weird uh, with Anthony Sherman kind of going off. So I'm hoping we get back to normal here and get back to normalcy. And I'm not sure that's a thing with the Pro Bowl, but we can always hope. So uh, pretty excited to see how things go on Sunday. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And I think I kind of needed a mental break from the NFL. And next week I'll come in rejuvenated, ready to look at the Super Bowl as we get to see the San Francisco 49ers take on the Kansas City Chiefs. However, we won't see any of those players this weekend. We will get to see a lot of the NFL's best. One of your favorite players this week is the Detroit Lions wide receiver, Kenny Galladay. Galladay led the NFL with 11 receiving touchdowns this year and ranked seventh in receiving yards with 1,190. Why was Galladay so effective despite having a backup quarterback this season? The easy answer is that he's really good at football. And I think that's something we should prioritize in the Pro Bowl, which is weird because they're at the Pro Bowl. Everybody is good at football here. But with Kenny Galladay, I think that you kind of hit the, the nail on the head there. We're looking for guys who had bad situations during the regular season who now get to catch passes from Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, and Kirk Cousins. That is a lot better than Jeff Driscoll and David Blau. And you mentioned all the stats for Kenny Galladay, and I think that those are all super impressive. But just in general for the Pro Bowl, we want to use wide receivers and tight ends for the single game slate on FanDuel because the way things work is there are three quarterbacks and three running backs on the roster for each team, but there's only going to be one of those guys at each position on the field at a given time, whereas there are three wide receivers and one tight end, and there are only four wide receivers on the entire roster. So in general, we want wide receivers and we want tight ends because when we use those guys, the snap rate of our team will be higher. So we're looking for talented players at those positions, and it's hard to get more talented than Kenny Galladay. I think that He's a super talented wide receiver. He can go up and get it. He can convert on a long catch as well. So I think that when I'm filling out lineups and favoring this NFC squad, I'm going to turn to Kenny Galladay first. He is a really good candidate for your MVP slot where you get a 1.5x bonus. We know what he can do on low volume. We know what he can do with bad quarterback play. And I'm excited to see what he can do here, catching balls from Russell Wilson and Drew Brees. I like what you said there. I didn't think about thinking of the receivers who were in bad situations that still made them good. And another receiver that didn't have to deal with that was Amari Cooper, who had the quarterback that threw for the most passing yards in the NFL in Dak Prescott on the Dallas Cowboys. However, you have Cooper here, a top 10 receiver in receiving yards this season with 1,189. Why is Cooper going to be a big play in this Pro Bowl? Yeah, you're right. He had a great situation this year because Dak Prescott was amazing. So this is not in the same tier as Kenny Galladay, but what Amari Cooper has is rest. Whereas the other two wide receivers on this NFC roster are Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams. Michael Thomas caught like 170 balls this year, so he's probably pretty tired. Devontae Adams is just playing last week. Uh, he had like 160 yards in the conference championship. But Kenny Galladay and Amari Cooper have rest on their side because Amari Cooper did not make the playoffs. And as we know, this dude is pretty talented as well, just like Kenny Galladay. Now, the one thing that concerns me a bit with Amari Cooper and the reason I have him below Kenny Galladay on my list is that Cooper is entering a contract negotiation phase. And when that's the case, unless you're Kirk Cousins when he was in the Pro Bowl a couple years ago, you're probably not going to go too nuts. So he could play it safe, and that's why I want to favor Kenny Galladay over Amari Cooper. But Cooper is still a hyper-talented player. He is rested, unlike some other wide receivers. And uh, he, just like Kenny Galladay, we've seen what he can do in blowing up slates. So I think among the NFC wide receivers, even when you consider the potential contract considerations for Amari Cooper, I'm going to rate Galladay first, Cooper second, and then go with Thomas and Adams after those two guys. But Cooper's still a really good play, despite the question marks around his contract. At tight end in the NFC, you have Saints tight end Jared Cook. You were talking about receivers being well-rested and how it could help them in the Pro Bowl. However, Cook did just come off a nine-touchdown season, which is a career high for him. How is he not going to be tired this weekend? 
Yeah, he'll be tired, but he's really good. Uh, and I think that's kind of the one factor here for Jared Cook because the two tight ends in the NFC roster are Austin Hooper and Jared Cook. And no disrespect to Austin Hooper, uh, but from a talent perspective, I like Jared Cook quite a bit. The other consideration for Austin Hooper is that he is like Amari Cooper where he could be entering free agency this upcoming offseason. So I would not blame him if he were to take it a little bit easy. If I were in his shoes, I would do the exact same thing. But that pushes me towards Jared Cook. Jared Cook this past year had six team deep targets for the Saints that is despite missing two games and playing an offense that doesn't throw the ball deep very often. Uh, Cook was second on the team in deep targets behind Michael Thomas and he converted as you said with those nine touchdowns on those deep targets pretty often. I love tight ends for the Pro Bowl if you look back at the past six years. There have been multiple tight ends among the top five guys in scoring in five of the past six years, and last year being the lone exception. So you want to use tight ends. And on the NFC side, I like Jared Cook more than I like Austin Hooper because of the contract and because I just think Jared Cook is a hyper-talented player. So, yeah, not quite as rested as Austin Hooper because Hooper was at home during the playoffs, but Cook was eliminated in the first round. I think that helps, and I just like his talent a lot. So Jared Cook, someone I like quite a bit. I think he's up there with Galladay as being one of my favorite plays out of either team for this game. With that being said, in the NFC, you like Kenny Galladay, Amari Cooper, and Jared Cook, who's your tight end. Let's switch over to the AFC, where you have the Denver Broncos wide receiver, Cortland Sutton. You were speaking about Galladay before in the quarterback situation, having to deal with a quarterback that wasn't the ideal situation with Matthew Stafford going down. Now on the AFC side, the Broncos had to turn to Drew Locke at quarterback. Sutton hasn't scored a touchdown since December 1st, and he only had two games where he had over 100 receiving yards. Why is he your number one pick at AFC here? Well, it's exactly what you mentioned, where he is in a similar situation to Kenny Galladay, where he goes from Joe Flacco, Brandon Allen, and then eventually Drew Locke did play pretty well down the stretch for the Broncos. But overall, that was not a great situation for Denver, not a super prolific offense. And you can understand why Cortland Sutton's production wouldn't be that good. But when you look at it from a talent perspective and watch this guy play, He's really freaking good. So kind of like Kenny Galladay, we're just targeting really talented wide receivers. And Cortland Sutton checks that box. He had 35 deep targets for the full season. He was a favorite of Joe Flacco down the field, even when uh, Emmanuel Sanders was there. And then when Drew Locke came to town, it was basically only Sutton who got deep targets on this team. And even though the defense knew where the ball was going, Sutton, Sutton still played really well. He was able to muscle through defenders get that two touchdown game in the first game that Drew Locke played. And I think that that is really valuable. Cortland Sutton, if you look at his pro football focus grades, was one of the best wide receivers in football this year. And that'll be catching passes from Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson. I love that because Deshaun Watson can throw it deep and throw it deep really well, as can Lamar Jackson. And it's just an upgrade for him. So the same line of thinking applies to Cortland Sutton, as did Kenny Galladay, finding players moving into better situations than they had during the regular season. We'll talk about that with DJ Chark coming up as well. But I think that Sutton, given the talent he possesses, is really hard not to love for this slate. You mentioned DJ Chark, the wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's a rookie playing in a Pro Bowl. He led the Jaguars this year with 1,008 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. He led the Jaguars in touchdowns, too. How do you think that Chark lines up against the elite of the NFL? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because if you look at the Jaguars' schedule this year, they did not face a very tough schedule. I think that that doesn't really bode the best for Gardner Minshew, uh, but I think that it also says that maybe Chark wasn't getting the best quarterback play for this year because Minshew's numbers – Pretty below average despite facing that plus schedule. But the one guy who was a true bright spot in this offense was DJ Chark. Again, kind of similar to Cortland Sutton and Kenny Galladay where he got a lot of downfield looks. I want that in the Pro Bowl where guys, they're not going to dink and duck. They, dink and dunk. They don't want to just, you know, uh, play that type of game. They want to bomb it deep. And we've seen that pretty often during the Pro Bowl where average depth of targets do go up. And DJ Chark, as we know, can go get those balls down the field. If we look at the other two receivers on the AFC roster outside of Sutton and Shark, it's guys like Keenan Allen and Jarvis Landry. And both those guys are really good. They are super talented football players, but neither of them are field stretchers quite the same way that Sutton and Shark can do. I want guys who can pay off on low volume. And in order to pay off on low volume, you got to get down the field and you got to get big yardage. Sutton and Shark can do that. And I think that that's what draws me towards DJ Shark here, where he only needs like two targets to pay off. And we're not going to see a whole lot of targets, a whole lot of volume for anybody in this game. So I want guys who can pay off in a hurry. I know DJ Chark can do that because he did so during the regular season. That'd be not, I would not be surprised if he were to do so again here. 
In your AFC tight end position, you have Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. Andrews, in his second season, had 10 receiving touchdowns, which is the second most in the NFL. How do you see Mark Andrews in just his second year in the NFL matching up against all the other tight ends who are slated to play in this Pro Bowl? Yeah, I think that's a really good way to phrase it because we are kind of choosing here between guys like Mark Andrews and Jared Cook. And to me, I think that I put Mark Andrews second. I would put Jared Cook first. I just love, again, I love the physicality of Jared Cook. I love the size and the talent. I'm going to put him first. Andrews is second because he's been banged up kind of all year long, and he did play, uh, you know, one week deeper into the postseason than Jared Cook did. So the rest is not there. That's why I'm going to favor Jared Cook over Mark Andrews. But I do want Mark Andrews over his teammate Jack Doyle, and I probably like him more than Austin Hooper as well. And the big reason for that is because Mark Andrews got a lot of deep targets from Lamar Jackson this year. He had 24 deep targets, which is the most of any tight end in this Pro Bowl. Jared Cook was second with 16. So it's a pretty big gap between Mark Andrews and the field. And he showed this year he can convert on that deep volume as well. I mentioned he was banged up in that playoff game against the Titans. He did still play 47% of the snaps in that playoff loss. It's not a huge number, but it is in line with what he did for the full season. So it seems like he's pretty healthy. He's had a couple of weeks to rest up as well. So I think we should be good to go with Mark Andrews. It also helps that he's paired with his quarterback here because Andrews will start for the AFC as well as quarterback Lamar Jackson. We've seen those guys have really good chemistry throughout the entire year. And I wouldn't be shocked to see that carry over into the Pro Bowl as well. So if I'm ranking the tight ends across both teams, I go Jared Cook one followed by Mark Andrews, then Austin Hooper, and then Jack Doyle on the AFC side. But I think you really can go with any of those four guys because tight ends are just on the field more often than most positions in this format. So I think they're all in play. But if you are going to make me pick, I'll go Jared Cook one, followed by Mark Andrews. It is interesting you mentioned the injury factor. Andrews was dealing with an ankle sprain, and it's interesting to see how long he might be playing in this Pro Bowl. However, it wouldn't shock me if Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews just wanted to connect one time in the end zone in the Pro Bowl. Before I let you go, who is your Pro Bowl pick? Who's winning this, the AFC or the NFC? I really love the NFC quarterbacks. It's Russell Wilson mostly. That's that's the main thing I like because guys don't run here, so I just want the guy, the best pure passer in this game. I think it's between Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. I'm going to give Russ the slight edge, so I am going NFC. Uh, what about you? You know, I have to say the same. I'm going to go NFC here, even though Lamar Jackson will probably have himself a field day <laughs> against a Pro Bowl defense that doesn't usually love to make tackles. Right. However, recently we've seen the defense come alive a little bit in the Pro Bowl games in the last few years. It's not as much of a shootout as it once was. Should be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, it's always a good time when we get to watch Lamar Jackson play more football. I agree. Maybe we'll see some trickery or something along those lines. I grew up a Ravens fan, so it'll be fun. But Jim Son is from Number Fire. Thanks for joining us. We'll speak to you soon. Looking forward to it. Super Bowl next week should be a blast. We'll talk to you then. And good luck with the Pro Bowl as well. Thank you. We'll definitely get your picks next week. But for everyone here at SportsGrid, this is your fan duel. Hurry up. And I'm Ariel Epstein. Enjoy the weekend and enjoy the Pro Bowl.